103.9 FM, WOZO Radio, Knoxville. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. Hello and welcome to the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Today is Sunday, February 28th, the last day of the month of 2021. I'm Larry Rhodes, or Doubter 5, and as usual, we have our co host, Wombat, on the line with us. Hello, Wombat. Happy last day of Black History Month. Black Lives Still Matter. You can't you can't forget that <laughs> didn't happen. It's still there. That's we got true. one more day left. Yeah, then we yeah, go back yeah, to normal. Yeah. But we're still don't in. forget. Don't forget. Yeah. We still matter. Yeah. <laughs> Our guests today are George Boudreaux, Doubtfire. Welcome all. And um, Digital Free Thought Radio Hour is a talk radio show about atheism, free thought, rational thought, humanism, and the sciences. And conversely, we'll also talk about religion, religious faiths, gods, holy books, and superstition. And if you get the feeling you're the only non-believer in Knoxville, well, you're just not. There are several atheist, free-thinking, and rationalist groups that exist right here in Knoxville, and we'll be telling you how you can connect with them right after the mid-show break. Also, did you know that there was a streaming atheist call-in video show, TV slash show here, Mm -hmm. broadcasting from Knoxville? It has been for over 10 years. Did you know that, Wombat? I really want to get into it, but I can't afford a Hulu account. What can you do for me? Hulu? Yeah. I wish we were on Or is it on Disney Plus, or is it on Netflix, or is it on Amazon Prime? It would be nice if it was on all of them. It It is on YouTube. Oh, it's YouTube's free? Okay, okay. Hey, I'm back in again. Let's go. Go go to YouTube and do a search for um, Knoxville atheists or knoxville free thought and you should find them if you get uh if you'd like to interact with us during the show go to our facebook account digital free thought radio hour and use the messaging function to send us questions or comments uh wombat what's our topic today hey today we're going to be talking about the wonders of science i still get confused with that camera right here i got to make sure i'm looking into the right uh-huh. camera anyway wonders of science versus wonders of religion you're gonna dazzle us with science i want to talk about some cool things that are interesting in our lives personally that science have given us and then cool things in our life that have been brought to us through religion maybe if we can see if there's a a nice comparison there i know we're a room full of atheists (laughs) (laughs) but we're gonna try we're gonna try to make this a fair we're gonna make this a fair fight it's not a competition necessarily but it kind of is anyway before we get into that i want to do very quick very fast very rapid short estimate summation of your entire lives over the last month <laughs> maybe half half your lifetime whatever you got george it's been two weeks since we've seen you last how you been um why don't you pick on somebody else for a moment george, you got somebody I, your own to, size. I i seem to have two different um um zoom presences here i'm trying to oh no 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 this is the... out so oh i thought that was george from buffalo i thought that was buffalo george that just came in no it was me and oh, i'm all that. screwed up here so so speaking uh, of science he he's uh-huh. battling science currently that's right? technology yes. well, let's, about ah, science. come on can like, you all see me right now yes. can see you. <laughs> i can't see anything <laughs> you're not the cat emoji are you no no <laughs> okay. no he's not a cat he's not a cat. now the radio audience can't see you at this point boudreaux how you been how you been i think you're getting ready for your second vaccination shot or if you've already had it what's going no, on no 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 yeah i had mine uh probably about three weeks ago now we're my wife you're and i are both good. yeah we're so we we were actually a little bad and we um took the kids uh last week to south carolina we went to hilton head um the island was actually really good about masks um I guess they were really locking down on mask requirements. Um, outside of the island, it was really scary because nobody was wearing masks. Sure. Everyone was. You're in South Carolina. Way. What are you going to do? <laughs> we tried to get a bite to eat on our way back from um, the uh, um, uh, what was it? Magnolia Plantations. Um, uh, uh, and as we were coming back, it was pretty late. I'm like, let's grab a bite to eat. It was a Friday night. And we had to walk in and out of places, go, nope. <laughs> Whoa. Like 35 minute waits and just tons of people. So, um, yeah, uh, you know, we were playing it safe. I mean, our kids are still, you know, unvaccinated, but they're, they are children. So that's, they're, they're safe, safer, I suppose. But we were, we were grocery stores and, um, you know, masks and, and we did a lot of outside stuff. It was great. It was, uh, really much needed uh, vacation for us to just get good. away. 
Yeah. That's really good to hear. I'm also yeah. a little concerned. Like I desperately want to go out to restaurants again, but I think the idea of waiting 30 minutes to eat is sort of just like one of those bonkers things. I wished I had forgotten. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> like, wait, waiting lists, waiters, tipping, like, Oh, I hate this. Yeah. Well, I, I forgot about all this stuff that I hate. I just want to, it's one of the things I miss the most is eating out. Yeah. Yeah. About all this. Anyway. Uh, cool. Scott, how you been? We're all gonna be quiet. Hey, been doing really good. Hopefully, my echo is not too bad. But yeah, I've been doing pretty good. Um, still working on music projects and placing music for companies and jingles, commercials, YouTube shows, you name it. So I've been utilizing my new studio. When can we hear any of your cool new stuff that you're coming out with? really soon like really nice. soon yeah. like soon as pot like maybe next week okay cool okay, not cool. as ambiguous as this soon but next week we'll, we'll, we'll hold you to it, it it's yeah, all recorded it it's just i just need to put it up somewhere cool all right thank you scott larry how you been doing fine just staying in staying safe and playing computer games the, what was the last you're 70 you don't get out a whole lot anyway yeah but <laughs> You've been trolling people on the internet, I can imagine. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm not trolling them, but I do interact with them. I like doing that. Uh, it it keeps me um, involved, I guess, with, the, with okay. the community. Cool. Um, I am so looking forward to getting my second vaccination shot because I live right nearby a mm -hmm. public pool, and yeah. I don't want to jump into that pool. <laughs> I know they say <laughs> chlorine doesn't kill COVID, but I don't know if the science is out on that yet. <laughs> right. I just like I just want to take I don't want to take my chances. Uh -huh. uh, until then, I've been running to get my shape back in form so that I could be wear a swimsuit in public and not feel bad. And uh, I'm knocking out five Ks. I'm having a fun time, but I want to talk really about what I'm really excited about, which is wonders of science. And I want to start today with a purchase I've made on the internet. And it's this little dude. I, it's not an endorsement. It's just, there are, there are thousands of products just like this. And what this well, is, is, yeah, the radio audience. Sure, sure, sure. See that. <laughs> right, 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 right. It looks like one of those, uh, uh, trimmers that you stick up your nose, except you stick them in your ear and it's not a trimmer. It's oh. a camera with a pick at the end of it. Oh. And the idea behind it is, uh, you can, st it, you're so believe it or not, you're not supposed to use Q-tips in your ears. Did you guys all know that? Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, we got some thumbs up here. Yep. It is one of those things that you just assume that you do because everyone uses it. But on the box, it says not for ear use. So it's a question of like, what do you even use these things for in the first place? Q-tips will actually compact the earwax already in your ear canal and make it even harder for it to come out. And you may end up losing your hearing as a result. And so what you're really supposed to do is pick the earwax out, earwax out either by a professional or you get one of these and you can do it yourself. And what the cool thing is, this has a tiny little Wi-Fi enabled camera. Your cell phone basically acts as the monitor. You connect it to the PIC and you can see a live feed of yourself pulling out earwax out of your ear. It sounds gross, trust me it is. But let me tell you, once you clean out your ear canal for like the first time in years, it is an insane sounding experience. You, It's not just I can hear wind, I can like feel the direction of wind, just like from my ears, it's like, oh, <laughs> southwest by southeast, about six knots. I can see, it's insane, it's so crazy. I'm not saying I hear music any better, like I still feel like I had pretty sensitive hearing, but I think this is a wonder of science that I can just do this on myself, by myself, without having to worry about COVID, <clears throat> making an appointment, driving out, commuting, all that stuff, just buy this and I can do this as many times as I want, clean my own ears, I think it's So Ty Tyrone, you, do you mean that it's you said it has a camera on it. It has a tiny little camera, yeah. So where do you see the picture? I see the camera coming out of the tip. And so I literally see the point of view I, uh, of the tip of the cleaner as it goes into my ear. And do you see it on your cell phone or on I your see it on my cell phone. Or? I see a live feed on my cell phone about 30 frames per second. It's pretty wow. good. I saw my own eardrum for the first time yesterday. And it was like this wild experience of like, whoa, <laughs> I've always heard about you, but I've never seen you. That's so cool. That's so cool. But yeah, my like ears are that. very, very clean now. I love it. I love it. It's really uh, pink and fresh on the inside. It's can really you all hear me now? Yeah, we can yep. hear you just fine. Oh, okay. I'm George, back. How about this? Why don't you, I know you're battling with technology. Is that a Casio keyboard that's going on behind you? 
Uh, yes, it is. Very cool. I, I got it at the I got it at the Seventh Day Adventist thrift shop for five dollars. Did you get it on Sunday? Because they aren't supposed to be open. <laughs> I got it on a Tuesday. Actually, nice. their thrift shop is open one or two days a week, cool. and I just lucked out. It had um, uh, it had the wrong power supply. It came with a power oh. supply for a laptop computer easy. in the wrong volt in the wrong voltage. And if That's I had easy. connected it, I would have blown the thing up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's a great fix. That's an easy fix too. So it works and everything. Yeah. Well, I had a I I took the power supply from a, an old modem and changed the the plug and you know sure, everything sure, works. Sure. Everything I imagine works. It works. Yeah, yeah. Did you have? I mean, did you want to talk about that as your wonder of science? Well, no, no. I am a musician by training, mm. and so um, I always wanted to have a keyboard of some kind. Mm. So that that's what that is. I'll talk a little more about me, my musical involvement later in the program because it's relevant to your science topic. So then, but, what is your science topic then? What's that? My what's science, science topic? topic? Yeah, yeah. What's your wonder of science? Oh, well, let's get into that later because I want to tell you about my week, my okay. two weeks. Then it's tell been me two about weeks your two weeks. Tell me, oh, yeah, since I've been ahead. here. Tell yeah. me about your two weeks. Tell me about your two weeks. How about well, that? as you know, this is a Knoxville Atheists program and. Sure. Uh, Larry, if I've got this correct, you're the only person who's actually in Knoxville. That's true. My heart's in Knoxville, of all of us. <laughs> My heart's in Knoxville, though. And I'm the yeah. one who started the group, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Our hearts are all in Knoxville. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm the clo I may be the closest one other than you, Larry, and I'm about, I'm 60 miles. We feel loved. Yeah. What's that? <laughs> we feel loved. Oh, yes, I yeah, do. With all your hearts being here. Yes, <laughs> and I, I really feel loved. Um, so anyway, uh, I got my second COVID shot. Oh, good. Nice. And um, it was a strange experience because my, my car has been in the repair shop and I was driven by somebody else. And, and um, we went to the wrong place. I went to, we went to the place where I got the last shot and there was nobody there. It was the county park. Oh, geez. So the person who called me to tell me I was scheduled neglected to tell me that the joint had been moved. It had been moved back to the county health department a few miles in the opposite direction. Wow. So um, off we went. And uh, it was a a different experience than the first time, but you know, the, the people were there. Now, uh, for one thing, my friend had been signed up in a, in another county. So the sign up procedure had been changed. And the new sign up procedure was you sort of call the state phone number and they asked, they would ask him, uh, do you want the next available appointment? And he said, yes. And then they said, well, the next available appointment is in Meigs County. Would you like to go there? And he said, yes. So they signed him up in the county where he doesn't live. So uh, in the meantime, he's younger. He, he's in a younger age. Break. George, what's the science? <laughs> it's a whole different topic. It's a whole different topic. I'm, I'm, I'm still back on. Ah, okay, 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 okay. Okay. We're still so doing anyway. the show though. <laughs> okay. right. Come on, right? uh, we got people waiting to say things too. So what, okay. What, uh, yeah. Let me go to the bottom line here, Please. which is that um, nobody told me that I would experience side effects after the second shot. And I did. So that's what I want to share with all the rest of you. Is oh, I've that, heard several people say that they didn't have any side effects until yeah. they had the second shot. Exactly. So, uh, I, I didn't have heard first other one. people say that they were pretty bad, but not yeah. going to keep me from getting the second no, shot. No, I don't say that my <laughs> No, no. It, but but what I what I want to say about it is that the side effects that I experienced were the ones that are on the CDC website, yeah. plus mm -hmm. some dental pain and you know a little weirdness. Yeah. But it well, all I went away. At, it yeah. went away within 12 hours. I was no, going to ask you how long yeah. did they last? Well, they, they didn't come on until about 12 hours after the second shot. And then within 12 hours of that, they were gone. Okay. Cool. So that's what I experienced. I would say two things. There's a hidden gem in there of science because you weren't just get, one, you got an awesome vaccine. That's a, that's a great miracle of science. If you want to call it that, but also 
when you got side effects, you had access to uh, a network of databases that can tell you, hey, this is normal. Hey, CDC has uh, done this extreme research, summarized it so that anyone can understand it and made it available for you to, to access at your leisure. And but I think none of the nurses... Fantastic. None of the nurses at my county health department told me that. They didn't even tell you where to go. <laughs> it's no, I would, they I'd didn't. write them off, yeah. And they said to my friend, hey, would you like a shot too? Yeah, good, good. I'm glad they're giving them so, up as they So bang, he got, he got his first shot nice. because of third shot? their mistake. Yeah, huh? yes, he got his first shot. First shot. Your first driver. Shot. My driver, yeah. yes, yeah. that's yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Okay, yeah. cool. We drove. I want to know a miracle of science from you. And is that a pair of underwear that I'm looking at in the background? On it your... is. And it's, I, I use it to, to wipe sweat from my face when I'm exercising. Okay. Well, you got to do it. You got to do what you got to do. Yeah. Is it your underwear? That's the thing. <laughs> no, it's yours, Larry. <laughs> Anyway, oh, miracle science. What's going on? No, it's miracle not. Science. Wonder of the science. I keep careful track of my underwear. <laughs> I only have one pair, Larry says. Um, I, I think uh, I, I'm always uh, amazed by kind of radio uh, wave technology. You know, any any remote control, the infrared or or radio or or. Uh, you know, unlocking a car remotely. I mean, you know, the, the beauty of how a relay works where I can push a button here and it can send a radio signal to my mm -hmm. car and it's hooked up to a battery. So there's a relay that, you know, it connects and, and it starts or it unlocks that to me is, you know, that's, it's just seems like magic because it's not, you know, physical, you know, it's no not, wire. There's no wire. Yeah. There's no wire connecting. Yeah. It's, and, and I've done a little, little dabbling in, in, in building these types of circuits and, playing around with them and it's just remarkable you know turning you on thought lights. About going into ham the radio well okay that, that's you know getting voice over over radio that's i mean that yeah, that's pretty <clears throat> impressive too um but uh, no i've never been a big um i guess i had a cb as a kid um, oh wow. that's different isn't it isn't that but yeah uh, anyway, what, I was a radio man in the Navy and I'm a ham radio net guy now. You're uh, a bit of a ham still. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a ham on the air too. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, ham means amateur radio uh, okay. for those who may not know. Yeah. And, I really and CB like, is central broadcast or something like that. The citizen band. The citizen band. So, uh, yeah. What's and, blowing uh, my mind? Oh, go for it. Go, no. Okay. I was saying what's blowing my mind nowadays is because uh, I had this wireless thing, right? But I also have mm -hmm. Bluetooth tiles which if I lose my keys or if I lose my wallet, it's no longer an hour long, you know, stress episode for me. I just push a button on my phone and it rings if I'm within 500 feet of it. And I'm like, so great. I lost yeah. my cat in my, I opened up my backyard. Oh, he's got it. I opened up my backyard and my cat walked into my uh, little porch area. I have a little like storage shed and I closed it with him in it because I didn't realize it because he's black, he's a black cat. It was like yeah, black well, cat. cats will do that anyway. Yeah, and I walk home and I shut like two doors behind me and I'm like, it is suspiciously quiet in this house. What's going on here? And I push my uh, tile thing and it's like, I could hear it ringing. I'm like, oh, he's outside. I open up the door. He's outside somewhere. Open up the storage shed. He comes walking straight out. I'm like, I'm so glad I have this thing. So yeah, very good. Um, I'm talking about little devices that use radio waves. Uh, so I just got a, a heat, I mean, a meat thermometer. Ooh that you plug into the your turkey or whatever put it in the oven and it communicates through bluetooth with your, with your cell phone oh that's cool and she can be watching tv and it'll go beep 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 telling her that it the meat is done nice mm. yeah, isn't that awesome that is amazing cooking yeah. is so much better with technology i think i yeah. think it's just gonna there work. was an interesting thing on the news talking about science um it, I just saw it last night. It said the scientists have uh, actually cre discovered a way of transmitting electricity from space directly to the Earth. Um, well, anybody else see that? It's not like a superpower weapon or anything. Like yeah, that. don't get in its way. Uh, well, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't stand on anything copper. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but no, that's interesting. Oh, uh, George, you're on mute. I'd like to comment on that. Go um, for it, go for it. First of all, uh, Nikola Tesla proposed that idea. N Nikola Tesla was an alternating current junkie. 
Mm -hmm. He kept on just coming up with more and more and more permutations of alternating current and ways that he could use it. And broadcast power was one of them. Right. And um, a matter of fact, he, he tried to sell the whole concept to the financier, yeah. J.P. Morgan. <clears throat> right. and, but you can't, uh, you can't get past the inverse square law. When you broadcast, like he was talking about, you know, he'd set up a big central area broadcasting electricity to the devices wirelessly around the central uh, broadcast unit, and they would work. But inverse square law says that if you get twice as far away, you get a quarter right. of the power, and that you know that that diminishes very quickly. Mm. And he he was. I, I have a lot of respect for. Uh, him, uh, but he went around showing these devices and trying to raise money for his project, and that's just a step shy, I think, of fraud because you oh. could never put that into Hold use. Hold on. Hold on. I'm going to give really some. sell that. <laughs> as, I got to step in a little bit. There's and, nothing wrong with selling the pitch and I and the dream and raising money off of it because. That technology would advance by now if it was, you know, started to be integrated way back when. So, like, we have now phones that can charge on platforms, and we have, to an, ex to an extent, uh, uh, things that can charge at somewhat distance away. Yes, it's still subject to the inverse square rule or inverse square law, but we can get better at technology through working at it. Like, think about the guy who is injecting himself with cow pus and being like, I, I think this is making me healthier. I have a dream that this might actually solve COVID yeah, but one day. He had to we have didn't, known and we're not doing the cow thing that, anymore. We got better technology. System, we better. It wouldn't work. Yeah, but like at a certain point, you have to try it. Like you have well, to figure that out. I have to give out. him a lot of credit for, yeah, uh, like, for uh, sending, I mean, backing the alternate current yeah. because that's the way it went. I think that's even, way, what, it, you know, it's the best Well, I go. think also, you know, uh, I'll um, just one last point, one last point. Uh, like for example, electric cars, what if we had streets? What if we just figured out a different way to, to transport the energy sources so that it's easier to the things that we want to charge? Like there are ways to like engineer our way around it, but you got to make a first step somewhere. And I, mm. I wouldn't say it's a fraud to be like, <clears> hey, it could be awesome please give me money so we can at least start getting there like i don't think that's as big well uh i, I want to talk a little bit for a second here about the wonders of science in in the concept of radio broadcasting we really are putting power into the air you know and the proof of that was way back when transistors were pretty new there was a magazine called Popular Electronics, and they published a fascinating circuit that you could build at home, very simple, which was a double transistor radio. <clears throat> it was two transistor radios on one little tiny platform. The second radio brought in power from a radio station and used that power to run the first radio and produce sound that you Ooh, could hear. Ooh, that's so clever. Yeah. So it, it sucked power from radio station number two so that you could hear radio station number one. Stuff like that's awesome. Scott, yeah. what's your wonder, your of, wonder science? of science? You know, I, I really think it's cool about the, um, the Perseverance, the Mars Land Rover mm -hmm. that uh, landed on Mars not long ago. That was awesome. I've seen the pictures, the videos, and things of that nature. Do you know uh, which... Aside from Perseverance, do you know what uh, Land Rovers are still working on Mars and which ones are not? Since we have a bad echo, bad echo. why don't you, uh, you uh, answer <laughs> yeah. your question? <laughs> question. So uh, Mars Opportunity is dead. It died last year in July. And uh, Curiosity is still functioning. So it's one that was sent up there earlier. I don't know when it was sent, I think back in 2016 or something like that, but it's still working. Well, but it's just amazing how they can do that. It's really yeah, awesome. Yeah. It's an interesting fact that the that there's a planet in our solar system that's totally populated by robots. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Very true. Also, why is it that they can send, you know, that to Mars, but Amazon still takes a week to send, you know, 
this guy to me like come on can we can we get these technologies to talk to each other handshake uh so hey we just talked about some wonders of science when we come back we're going to be talking about wonders of religion well i have a wonder of science that i want to talk about a little bit too how about we do it right after the break sure that's fine it's a wonder of music in fact larry take us right back Sure. This is the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio 103.9 LP FM right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. And we'll be right back after this short break. 103.9 FM, WOZO Radio, Knoxville. Hello and welcome back to the second half of the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio 103.9 LP FM right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. I'm Daughter 5 and this is Sunday, February 28, 2021. By the way, if you don't live in Knoxville, you should still go to Meetup and search for an atheist group in your town. Don't find one? Start Start one. one! That's right. Earlier in the show, we said we talked about the atheist uh, video show that's broadcasting here from Knoxville. It was originally broadcast on Community Access TV, but now we've gone directly online. You can find us on YouTube by searching for Knoxville Free Thought or Free Thinkers or specifically the Free Thinkers United Coalition of Knoxville. Oh my gosh, that's a long <laughs> name. A long name. Uh, with us on our show today, we have Boudreaux, George, and uh, um, Doubtfire. That's it. Uh, one by where we're going to pick up on this. We're talking about wonders of science, and there's no greater wonder of science than the fan. What a fan, what a fan, what a fan, what a mighty good fan. What a, what what a mighty, mighty, mighty good fan. fan. <laughs> Guys, we are going to go over fan comments, listener-supported feedback on our channel. We had a really, really good one from Natalie Cruz. This is on our last week's episode, which was, Do Your Actions Match Your Beliefs? And Natalie Cruz says, I can understand where the line can get blurred with actions or beliefs and actions, especially more so when it intersects with our familial relationships. For example, most of all my family on my mother's side are Catholic or Exchen. Or Exchen. <laughs> She's saying Christian, but looks like an X on it. Uh, my grandparents are both, uh, my, uh, but, uh, they're on both cr- sides. Catholic or ex- Christian. My grandparents on both sides, so generationally as it goes. Anyway, some sayings are almost embedded in the way that we greet each other in a culturally respectful way. We say benedicion and 9.5 out of 10 times uh, they'll also say tosti bendiga which translates to blessings and God bless you. Uh, I participate in these actions with my grandparents as a way of respect. Although I'm an atheist, I don't tell them and it's better that they don't know. And although I believe in no gods, I take these actions because they are a way to maintain respect. Great conversation, gentlemen. Thank you very much, Natalie, for the comment. We appreciate that. Uh, have you guys, I think I think we're, I think think we've had a topic about this before where we, we've said happily bless you if someone sneezes <laughs> or Merry Christmas or Happy Ramadan if someone celebrates Ramadan. Um, yeah. My perspective is I don't have a horse in the race. I'm just showing respect to you as, a, as another mutual human being on this planet. And so I don't have a problem. Mm-hmm. I'd have no problem saying anything mm-hmm. I need to. If I, well, have know, my, the way I look at it is if, if they're celebrating, if I knew that they're celebrating Ramadan, I'll, I'll wish them a happy Ramadan. Yeah. Because that's what they, they're they going to be doing. They're happy they can with, again. <laughs> yeah. Same with Christian or, I mean, Christmas or, or whatever they're celebrating. If yeah. I don't know, I may just say happy holidays. But Yeah. Actually, I'm going to take that back. Ramadan is when you can't eat. Eid is when you can eat. So, like, they're way more excited about Eid than they are Ramadan. Yeah. 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 Anyway, uh, we're talking about wonders of science. We're, that conversation's done. Now we're going to boot up wonders of religion. No, and religion point, we have a wonder of science left. Well, I'm going to get to you. I'm going to get to you, but we're, I'm, I'm going to throw this out real quick because I think our topics connect and merge a little bit. I think it's both a, 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 a wonder of science that we have access to all these novel instruments. I mean, just look at the stuff that Scott's doing. He has a new computer button panel every week. But I also think religion has a lot of wonderful contributions towards science or towards music. I don't think Mm -hmm. a lot of the things that religion touts is factually accurate, but the impact that it has on music as an art form is without question. And I think for the most part, it's pretty good. I think like there's, there's, you can't listen to, uh, 
Tyler the, the Entertainer or Chance the Rapper when you're doing like a cathedral hall scene. Like it just doesn't match. You need the you need that harm you need that hard choir sound. You need Christian pop. <laughs> Sometimes you just need some good GCF uh -huh. music chords <laughs> in your face. Anyway, George, I'll leave it up to you for your story. What's your science contribution along with uh, idea of wonder of religion? Well, okay. Uh, it all will work, actually, um, because I have a question of science, which has been bamboozling me for most of my life, and it could make me religious because I don't have an answer for this. It has to do with the way musical instruments are tuned in our society. And uh, we use an equal tuning system, which was the inspiration for a piece of music by Johann Sebastian Bach called the Well-Tempered Clavier. And well-temperment means uh, the e an equality of musical keys one with another, with another, with another. And the way this is achieved is by tuning a piano, let's say, deliberately out of tune. Now, I was an instrument technician. You have all heard my work. I have not mentioned this before here. I was the leading harpsichord technician in New York during the early 1960s. And most of my work was done, in fact, for popular music, top 40 in particular. And that's why I say you've all heard my work. Um, harpsichord was used as a color sound. Uh, for instance, Rosemary Clooney's uh, pop tunes all had harpsichord in them because the harpsichord was the sonic trademark of her arranger, who she hated, by the way. And I, I worked on the Mitch Miller show. I worked for ABC, NBC, CBS, et cetera, et cetera. Um, the issue that has fascinated and frustrated me is the fact that musical instruments are deliberately set a little bit out of tune so that they are acoustically imperfect because the science does not add up. And that could make me a religious person because I do not have an answer for this. I think it's a little better for things to be slightly out of tune when they're all playing together because they blend better that way. This is a very the same sinusoidal wave. This is a very specific kind of out of tuneness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We all that agree that. that it's that it's in tune when it isn't. And to to make that even further not only within the octave, but it's been traditional for piano tuners to expand the octaves just a little tiny bit so that the top of the piano is can be a quarter tone out of tune with the bottom of the piano. Mm -hmm. And oh, we yeah. accept this. I mean, I think there's a psychological p penalty to pay for tuning this way as well. But I won't get into that. The the fact is that we all accept this as being in tune when it in fact is not. So that's like a wonder of science as And that's like the wonder, wonder to me. Yeah. I have no answer for this. That's fair. That's fair. Yeah, Where... well that that's the answer. Um the answer is I don't know, or we don't Ooh, know. Oh, I love it. You know, I and... like it, Larry. <laughs> I love that. And uh, there's no reason to go to a religion about that. I mean, even deism uh, thinks that there is a God, um, but it doesn't do anything, doesn't really have anything to do with us or our personal measured. needs or uh, personal relationship or anything like that. We cannot know anything about that particular God. And he may not even still be around. He might have got blown up in the explosion of Big Bang. Who knows? But so I don't consider anything like that a religion because you're not like, worshiping it you're not like you don't have a holy book you don't have any dogma so uh even if you say i don't know and it's weird it's strange and there's no way we we could find out i i don't you know religion is not a word i would use in that context yeah you now, need to have a funny hat to be a religion we all know that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah larry where's our okay. funny hat man today right we'll, we'll come back larry uh i feel like we missed out on your science topic i'm sorry for skipping over you buddy what's did you have a wonder of science that you wanted to talk about? A wonder of science. Yeah. Um, well, the, my big, I'm like uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson. I'd always wanted to be like uh, a space physicist, an astrophysicist, and and the wonders of 
uh, the unanswered questions of the very large and the very small hmm. uh, intrigue me. And uh, I, I guess you may you may or may not know what the grand unification theory is, but uh, we we still won't have one. Uh, there's some. You may never have one. We may never have some one, which is really strange because we can have science all the way from like you know everything everyday things that we see around us all the way up to you know, mega stars and black holes in the universe itself. But it, we can't take that science down to the micro level. It, it doesn't work. Uh, you you, know, you the, need a different branch of science. The classical have. sciences of, of Newtonian physics uh, right. don't work at the lower level. Because so. they had no idea of the forces that were at play. And we can't, con we, we can't really convert them without a grand unification theory. But anyway, that, that, that is a thing that, that intrigues me. And I've read, uh, I guess, most of... Uh, uh, oh, the wheelchair guy. I can't think of his name. Uh, oh, yeah. Hawking, Stephen Hawking. Uh, uh, Hawking. Hawking. He's right done now. so many more things yeah, than in a wheelchair. You could have you you <laughs> gone so many I, different directions. I, I, I'm that terrible with names. I'll be, I'll you be know, the first guy, to admit it. The big but, nose uh, guy who talks about the stars. Well, uh, let's switch this over to atheism because it's <laughs> technically an atheism show. Is what, what really gets me is I'll get online and I'll, I'll come across these Christians who, who adamantly claim that Christianity, I mean, religion, one, and Christianity uh, specifically is responsible for all modern science. And I would, I've uh, made a meme of it. It's got four distinct points of it. I'd like to go into it just for a second. People, oh, man, meme run. Here we go. Yeah, Everyone people buckle up. were practicing science well before uh, Christianity was established. Um, I mean, religions per se were forwarding answers, but they were not doing science. Uh, two, the early Christian sciences could be hardly anything but Christians. The church would have either banished, imprisoned, or tortured, or burned them if they had denied the tenets of Christianity. Sure. Two, three, whenever they made discoveries that went against the teachings of the Christian dogma, the church stood in their way and oppressed the resulting studies, often burning their books and papers and sometimes the scientists themselves. And now we have Republicans that do that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and fourth and last, when those early Christian scientists were doing science, they were not doing religion and vice versa. Uh, religious examinations into nature resulted in no discoveries or advances whatsoever, which brings us to the next area. Uh, everybody was talking about the great scientific uh, areas that they love to um, get off into. And let's talk about any religious discoveries. That I want you to not look at this skeptically. I want you to think of a good religious contribution, Larry. And I know you want to be skeptical. Now, I would, but you I said you contribution, but yeah, you didn't say scientific. I want a one. I want a wonder of religion from you. I want it to be nice, and I want you to. I want you to just swallow it and be nice for just two minutes. Take that saltiness out and just give me a nice little compliment about religion, if you if you got it. Well, I'll say this: um, <laughs> it has been used as a means to to congregate. Okay, we'll take that. And okay. and uh, you don't need religion to do that, but that has been the main contribution to society that religion has brought. That is fantastic, Larry. I feel like Scott wants to weigh in. Scott, did you want to say something? Want to say something? Yeah, I was going to piggyback off what Larry said earlier when he talked about the uh, grand unification and how religion comes into this, because I hear a lot of times that this is a perfect opportunity to sneak our God in, see, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, awesome. see, we can't, we don't have an answer. And so this is a perfect place. We can put Yahweh or Jesus, you know, mm -hmm. but yeah. it, that's like Neil deGrasse Tyson said, if that's the game you want to play, then you're going to have to say religion is an ever receding pocket of ignorance, mm -hmm. right, you know, right. but on the positive side, if I had to say, what did religion bring to uh, people that's a value. Well, there's a lot of things. I could say uh, philosophy, a lot of philosophical thoughts spun off of religious ideas and things of that nature. Um, you could say music, like social interaction, um, meaning and purpose. A lot of people get meaning and purpose from associating mm -hmm. with this concept of God. Now, how um, true it is, I don't, I mean, I personally don't think that there's any truth in it, but 
if I had to say what sort of value, maybe a subjective kind of value, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, but that's about as far as I can go. But that that's everything, really. I mean, our subjective life is everything, really. It's it's really what gives us um, uh, happiness, joy, meaning, and purpose. And I always say, if I had to decide between truth and happiness, I would go with happiness every no, time. No, no, no. I disagree. I disagree truth every, truth single, every time. single time you can truth? They're, not, okay. they're, not, they're not mutually exclusive terms. Mutually terms you can be truthfully happy and Scott, you can be yeah, happy mind, and mind. ruin and a lot of people's, people's lives in the process echo you'd be happy and ignorant and ruining people's lives left and right truth you need you need truth you need truth absolutely yeah yeah all right eric you want to weigh in yeah yeah well ignorance is bliss maybe in that context but uh, um no black. I, <laughs> <laughs> it's a completely <laughs> different world <laughs> I was going to play a hidden brain episode. Uh, I don't know if anyone listens to hidden brain, um, but there's an episode called creating God, which I highly recommend. Look it up podcast. It's really cool. But one of the things they talk about is, and I think a, a credit to religion was, you know, when, when we were in very, very, when humans were in very, very small groups, um, you know, it was easy to see if somebody wasn't pulling their weight, contributing, mm -hmm. you know, so as those groups started, you know, and they would k kick them out or hit them with a rock or whatever we would do. I'm, I'm saying it's a him. I'm, I'm assuming the, the men are the ones that probably, not those probably been hitting rocks. Women aren't doing that. You know that we all know this. Right. You could talk to Lisa. It's like, no, <laughs> okay, fine. I'll yeah. <laughs> but as the group, like got, as those groups got bigger, it got a lot harder to detect if somebody was, you know, not contributing. And, uh, you know, as, as, you know, these tribes are getting bigger, you could kind of free ride everything. And so someone said, well, wait a second, you know, kind of almost like, you know, talking about Santa with your kids, you know, there's this big guy in the sky watching you. And if you aren't contributing, you know, and, and here's what's kind of creating some morality, some, some, some check to make sure you're doing, uh, doing your part. And, you know, I think that really helped. I, I'd be willing to bet that it really helped us grow bigger and be able to, to have, a bigger civilization without, without that kind of invisible hand. Um, yeah. Eric, I like the way on this. Cause I think it touches on the point more eloquently than I was saying with truth versus happiness. There are, there is no monopoly that religion has on motivating people to do good things and, and leading towards better societies. But it has also been the crux for, for example, uh, kamikaze pilots, you know, crashing into planes or right. terrorist activities flying into buildings or a number of atrocities that have happened during the Arab Crusades. What's going on currently now under like more conservative Christian values going to other nations and, and changing and instilling democracy in places that maybe didn't really ask for it in the first place. Mm -hmm. But I would say like, it's a difference between is it is it worth it because we're making people happier or is there a more truthful approach that we can go to making people more motivated to do the work that needs to get done so that we could have a better society and i would argue like in every capacity where we can find a shortcut to lie to people about a, a, a higher power that's making them do work if we were just truthful to them explain the mutual benefit of them being able to do the work and and instilling some sense of community service in them that would be much more healthier in the long run than to maintain a big lie that could but, potentially lead to more problems. But to be fair, talking about it in a historical context, when folks didn't have the vocabulary and the technology and, and, and maybe the people you're trying to explain that to can't even understand it. Sure. But if you say, you be good, God kill you, you know, that, <laughs> <laughs> that's about as far as you can go. Okay. Okay. I hear you, Eric. Okay. Larry, what do you Good got? point, though. Yeah. No, good uh, point, too. No, I, I certainly uh, acknowledge that point uh, Eric was making, or Boudreaux. Uh, the thing about it is the long-term effects, you can't mention the good without the bad, and the long-term effects of that type of uh, psychological programming is, is devastating over a long time and generations. Um, I mean, I've always thought of it as the very definition of uh, paranoia. Somebody is watching you and reading your thoughts every single minute of the day, ready to cast you into hell forever for the wrong one. Yeah. I mean, that not a, not a recipe for psychological health. That's actually, okay, Scott, you got a good question. question. What's up? What's yeah, up? I was gonna say religion though, doesn't always seek out happiness. In fact, um, religion mm -hmm. seeks out truth. 
at the expense of happiness because they even the Jehovah's Witnesses were called the truth. Yeah. So yeah. they're looking, they're claiming truth. And in claiming truth, they're telling you have to deny yourself of, you know, what feels good to you or what or what satisfies you intellectually and what, you know, because I get happiness from learning about true things, right? Right. But religion oftentimes doesn't want you to really seek truth. They they just want to monopolize this word truth as though brand. they we want the brand. contain brand. it. Yes. They, they, uh, they don't, I, I take exception to that. They don't seek truth. They seek obedience. Mm. They claim truth. They don't have any evidence for that, but they seek obedience. And uh, that's the whole point behind it. Boudreaux, I totally get your point that if I am village A and there's a village B that's coming after us tomorrow and I need to find a way to round up, you know, every able body to like set up a fight against these people and motivate them to maybe put their lives on the line. The whole God wants you to do this. Stand with me works very effectively in like a passionate moment. I can't deny that utility. I also... I also don't like the slow burn. So like in a completely different context, the slow burn of like, hey, we're not at war, but I just want 10% of your paycheck and you gotta do it. And also, can we get rid of the gays? <laughs> Cause I don't like them either. And, but I, 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 I wanna do this and that and this and that. And I wanna control these things. And I want you to raise your kids this way. It's like, ooh, you gotta stop that. That's so much more long-term hurt. I feel like we've, we've pushed the needle way away from uh, protecting ourselves from other religious zealots and more of just like crowd control. And I wish that wasn't the case because the long-term detractions that we're putting in by instilling religion don't outweigh the benefits that we might be getting from them. At least is how I see it. Uh, George, you've been quiet. I want to know what you think. Listen, I know you said you don't know about music, but here's, here's my question. Here's my question. Like, uh, do you think it's worthwhile to 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 have a religion say hey we we have an emergency situation i don't have the time to explain morality to you just believe in this god and and do these sets of actions and we've done that in the past but do you think well that, hell uh, no hell no because um i mean my background is jewish and i i must say that jewish people have been brutalized by christians for so many centuries, Absolutely. murdered, killed, you know, um, exterminated. Um, so I don't know what to say about that. I mean, I, 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 I see my own the people who come from the same tradition that I do yeah. committing atrocities against other people. And, I mean, and using using their religion to kind of hold themselves together as a group, you know, it was, it was grounds for enslavement of people. Like I'm sure, again, like could someone make the argument that well, we someone had to pick this cotton, <laughs> 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 but the long term damages of that don't you know outweigh the benefits of having cotton underwear for like a uh, like a couple of years, you know. So like I think it's obvious like we owe it to ourselves to seek the truth in all cases. And just because something claims to be the truth doesn't necessarily mean that it is the truth. And so indeed like a care, stolen election, for instance. Yeah. And if we care about the truth, it means we need to have standards for truth because that's the only way we can actually properly determine true things from false things. And I feel like one of the benefits of science, and I think the catch all benefit, the catch all one for science is that it gives us the best means of testing for truth which religion has offered nothing in that realm whatsoever. And I feel like now, how, how are we going to convince the religious people that we're telling them the truth truthfully, <laughs> truthfully. And if it takes one at a time, we'll do it one at a time. But like, I don't see any other reason why they should take more lies. I think truth is like a very disgusting vitamin milkshake, right? It doesn't <laughs> taste good, but it's good for you. Lies are always going to be delicious. And after a certain point, you'll realize this tastes too good to be true. <laughs> true has a little grit to it. True doesn't necessarily care about my feelings. True isn't necessarily like trying to be interested in making me look good. Truth is good. And doubt is very good too. Even though a lot of people have bad connotations on doubt, doubt is always on your side. It's the thing telling you not to jump in that tiger pit and punch that tiger in the face. Confidence says, do that. 
I can't wait for you to jump in that tiger pit. That was like, I don't think you can win that fight. Doubt's always on your side. Truth is always a thing worth going towards. And with those two things combined, you have the start of a really great standard to determine true things from false things. There's no other way around it. We have to have an appreciation for truth and doubt. And I think like the conversations that we do, uh, whether it's an, a an ask an atheist table, whether it's at the <laughs> summit, whether it's through music, whether it's through uh, just this show that we're having a conversation with or a Socratic examination, I think it's worthwhile to have those talks to instill a sense of critical thinking in other people. We are coming down to the bottom of the show. Scott, where can we find your music? Where can we get these jingles on, my friend? friend. Oh, yeah, you can go to uh, dubshine.bandcamp. Uh, dot com um, and check them out, download them, support it. Um, I'm going to be putting more stuff up daily at this Very point. Cool. So check it out. Very cool. Very cool. Boudreaux, when are you going to bust open that new mic? Show me some cool things that you're doing. You got podcasts coming up. You got, I, you got so many things going on. What's going on? Yeah. Well, vacation slowed down all the, that work, but I, I would like to maybe push aside my uh, contributions right now. And can I mention someone else's contributions I learned about on vacation? Sure. Especially in honor of the last day of Black History Month. Uh, we went to um, the Magnolia Plantation um, and visited these, these houses, these structures that were 1800s, 1900s, uh, where, where, and I'll say this the way they put it, they weren't slaves, they were enslaved people were were living inside these quarters uh they were like duplexes and this group called the slave dwelling project they actually go to these structures and stay the night in them all across the country and they're they, these are ones in in near charleston uh, south carolina but um, i'm told they also go to louisville where they have some here in kentucky so i don't know if you're aware of this project um but it was it was kind of a fascinating like uh, demonstration where they would show you how they cooked food um, yeah. only using the ingredients that they had and the, the equipment that they had back, back then. And just really just an eye opening experience of, of how, how they were living uh, or not living uh, as it seemed, but very cool. I'm really interested yeah. in that. Yeah. Yeah. Thank, thank you for sharing that. Uh, mm -hmm. George, is there a song that you are excited to play on your new keyboard or something? Not, a, not at all. I'm very bad at it. <laughs> I'm terrible. It was my first instrument and I can't. I'm sure you're going to get better at it sometime. It. I would love to hear, I would love to hear a thing that you could do in, in the future for sure. We got to make that a thing, right? <laughs> uh, I would say this last day of black history month, Get to know some black atheists. Uh, I think it's important. I think for the most part, we are very familiar with white male atheists. And I, I think most people would be hard pressed to name even like five black atheists. I'm one of them. Though. How do we find black atheists? Oh, that's Tyrone. a bizarre question. It's really bizarre, but let's, <laughs> there's a thing called the internet. You can look that you can easily find that stuff out. There's also a thing called comedy. <laughs> <Stand -up> <laughs> and you will be surprised that most black stand-up comics are very well aware of like being able to take falsehoods or truths and convert them into ways that are palatable, but also entertaining and also speak about a hard set truth. And a lot of famous comedians who are black, Eric Andre, Hannibal Buress, uh, and, and a number of others, I don't even want to go through them all, but like those guys are atheists. They they're outspoken about it as well. And they'll tell you some things about religion that I think are worthwhile. So if you're a Hannibal Buress fan, if you're a Ron Funches fan, if you're a uh, Eric Andre fan, he has a show on adult swim, check him out. Other black atheists, Mandisa Thomas, check them out. Artists, Tyler, the creator, he's a atheist as well. Get to know some, get to know some black atheists, have them in your pocket. That way it's not just all one voice that you're hearing you know, atheism from, because there's a lot of voices that make this community. I'd also say this too, on the internet, on Reddit, someone made a post saying, where are all the black atheists? And in the comment threads for that, I got a ping that someone had mentioned my name. And I was like, oh, that's kind of <laughs> cool. <laughs> there was a the list of them, and I was on that list and I was like, hey, that's me. That's kind of cool. So yeah, uh, shout out to Reddit. Thank you for that. Uh, Larry, anything else you want to say? Right, well, you oh yeah, uh, we were talking about the truth. And uh, if you want the truth, um, you, you need to start with the questions like science does. Find questions 
it. Start with the questions, look for answers that match the questions and, and repeatable, um, testable answers. Yes. Not You don't start with the answers, don't start with like the from answers. a book, and then just only uh, validate the things that, that support those answers and ignore the rest. So science is the way to go. Is my, way own to go. Real, my own real content is on digitalfreethought.com. I have a blog there. Make sure you click on the blog button if you don't land on it already. Uh, we have radio show archives there. These archives, uh, atheist songs and articles on the subject. My book is called Atheism, What's It All About? It's available on Amazon. And if you have questions for the show, you can send them to askanatheist at knoxvilleatheist.org and we'll answer them for you. Uh, if you're having trouble leaving religious, uh, your religious beliefs behind, uh, you have um, emotional problems, psychological problems, there's a group for you called recoveringfromreligion.org. If you're watching this on YouTube, be sure to like and subscribe. This has been the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. Remember, everybody is going to somebody else's hell. The time to worry about it is when they prove that heavens and hells and souls are real. Until then, don't sweat it. Enjoy your life, and we'll see you next week. Say bye, everybody. Bye, bye everybody. Bye-bye.